home, they're not going to get funded from the federal government for child support. The more child support they collect, the more they get rewarded or they get funded. They're almost incentivized. To they are. That, that, that. They, they I, are. I, support was never created to benefit the custodial parent or the child. Child support was created to, to reward states for effective child collection. Oh, it's, I mean, I didn't stop it. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> and for y'all listening right now, um, when we record podcasts, we don't cut anything because we want y'all to see it doesn't have to be perfect. And we just want y'all to just start if you're actually thinking about getting into this industry. Um, it's not about being perfect. It's just getting started. So welcome to the Flipping Tables podcast where we challenge limited beliefs and flip the tables on perspectives that may be holding you back. Today, I have a special guest. But before we introduce our special guest, do me a favor. Right here, I want you to click this button. Like if you like us, just do it. And if you think we're really cool, I want you to comment. And one more thing, tell two friends about it, that you're rocking with the best podcast on the planet. Now, before we get started, new segment that we're doing, mental health check, back to you, Brandon. Brandon, how was your mental health this week? Uh, everything is good. Um, I'm getting back into the gym. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I looked at my gut and it's like I, I have like a beer belly and I don't even drink beer. <laughs> Brandon, you have like 5% body fat. No, 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 no. It's way more than that. You're a liar. No, no, no. Can so. you show your abs right now? Absolutely not. Because <laughs> there isn't any abs to show. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, cool. How about you? Um, Good. A little tired. I feel like ever since the podcast summit, I've been um, kind of playing catch up. Okay. A lot of catch up. But um, really excited, though, to be able to help a lot of people um, kind of find their voice. Nice. Yeah. So today we have a very, very special guest. I'm not going to introduce our guest because I want to do it a little differently. So um, just for context, when I go into a place and I'm trying to introduce myself, it is really difficult for me. Right. I don't know how to I'm not really good at networking. So it's like, hey, who are you? What do you do? I'm like, uh, you know, I just, you know, I podcast, whatever it is. I get really shy. So I'm going to ask you this question as I introduce you. When you walk into a public place. Right. And people say, who are you? How do you respond to this question? And you can switch to one now. Oh, that's a very good one. So what's going on, guys? My name is Doreen DeLevante. I'm your favorite consumer law expert. I teach people how to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit using consumer laws. I also teach credit repair business owners how to scale their credit repair business to make an extra hundred to $200,000 per year using my four key principle, lead generation, client conversion, client ascension, and continuity. Those four can scale any business. So that's how I introduce myself. So I'm the really slow one um, between me and Brandon. Mm. One more time. Um, go through each one. The first one was what? Lead generation. Okay. So that's getting people in. Correct. Okay. A lot of business owners don't know how to generate leads. Leads equal income. No leads, no income. Do you feel like that's probably the hardest thing to do as far as like... Um, yeah, for most people because they don't want to make content. Mm. Content is key to generating leads because if you can't be the best kept secret, if you're the best kept secret, then, well, you're going to be the best broke secret, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Hit a button for him. Hit a button. Like um, OK, number two. is, And I'm going to ask questions about this. So I'm very curious. Number two is. Right. Oh, um, client conversion. OK, what does that mean? So when they come in as a lead, they could come in for a free thing or maybe a low ticket item, right? So when a lead comes in, they're not a paying client yet. So when they bought something like an ebook or whatever, now they become a client. The client ascension now, which is the third one, is how do you move a client from a low ticket item to a higher ticket item or constantly having them go up the value ladder? Mm. And then the continuity is how do you get someone now to pay you forever? Like the Netflix, the subscriptions, stuff like that. We're going to get back to all of this, by the way, but I'm just letting you break it down just so I have a framework to work from. Number three all is? Right. The client ascension, going okay. up the ascension ladder. Okay. So from forty seven dollars to one ninety seven, maybe to five hundred, then to fifteen hundred, then to five thousand, then to seven thousand five, then to twenty five thousand. Okay. And the last? Uh, continuity. So that's a subscription um, that you have. Maybe it's a university, a mentorship where there's a enrollment fee and then there's like $45 a month or $100 a month, like ClickFunnels, yeah. um, like Netflix. Those are continuity. You stop, go high level. You stop paying them, you lose the access. 
Mm. That's called a continuity play. So do you feel like every business needs all four? One million percent. Mm, agreed. Are you leaving money on the table? Stupid money. Hundred percent. And that's the reason why I asked about uh, pre-show. I asked about Myron Golden because um, it's this guy that just tells you the four basic levels, right? Mm -hmm. And that was literally essentially what he said. You need some type of subscription where you're getting recurring revenue that Correct. you depend on. Softwares, programs, newsletters, stuff like that. Okay. So for you right now, what do you do? <laughs> like the most basic level, right? I'm a third grader. Okay. What do you do? All right. Um, bad credit. I solve people's problem where bad credit is concerned because I teach them how to take their power back by repairing their own credit using laws put in place by Congress. Mm. I think that's as easy as I can break it. No, I think that's actually... Um, so what do you think is the most common um, problem that you run into as far as like, not you run into, but they run into? The miseducational system, misdirectional system. Oh, explain that. So um, there's, a, there's a thing called double speaking or double speech or double language. Like, there's different ways people call it. But basically it's saying something when you mean something else. And our society is notorious for doing it. I'm gonna give you an example. Okay. You've heard the word credit bureaus before, right? Yeah. yeah. But what if I told y'all credit bureaus is fake and it doesn't exist? I would ask you to explain that. Okay, so Congress has definitions. The Fair Credit Reporting Act, the law that governs everything that gets reported on your credit, credit bureaus are not in their definition. The correct terminology is consumer reporting agency. Okay. What do we know about a bureau? Not much, me what, personally. Think about a bureau. When you think about a bureau, what comes to mind? The FBI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's my point. So they know the meaning and the power of certain words. Knowing the meaning and power of certain words, well, if we miseducate a population, we can get them to do whatever they want if they begin to think that we are in a position of governmental authority. So I'm sure the consumers didn't make the words credit bureau up. It came from somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A bunch of might be paid actors that spread this propaganda, but then everybody bought into it and think that TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian are credit bureaus, and they're not. Wait, if they're not, then what are they? Consumer reporting agencies. They are a private company. They have no governmental affiliation whatsoever. So what you're saying is that people's credit score is based off just consumer reporting agencies? Correct. Huh. So, all right. The credit score has nothing to do with your consumer report. They are completely different things. A credit score comes from the use of an algorithm. The most famous one is FICO, okay. Fear Isaacs Corporation, right? Where they have a risk score model and that algorithm takes the information from your consumer report to give you a risk score or what they call a credit score. So that is a private company, a technology company that has nothing to do with. I'm Tani Majiqua, your podcasting ally. Have you ever felt that podcasting is a logistical nightmare? It's not all the glamour and deep conversations. You're nodding, aren't you? Coordinating with guests, handling the technical stuff, editing for hours on end. And when you've done all that, there's that daunting task of getting your podcast across multiple platforms. Overwhelming, isn't it? But hold on. What if there's a way to make podcasting painless? Introducing Podcasters On Demand. It's like having a dedicated remote podcast producer at your fingertips ready to handle all your needs. Wherever you are, wherever your guest is, we've got you covered. We'll take care of all your audio and video editing. You get to focus on what you do best, creating engaging content. And when you're ready, we'll send over your podcast to over 20 audio platforms and we'll even help you out with YouTube. But wait, there's more. We optimize your YouTube podcast, episode title, and description for maximum viewership. We even do thumbnails. Your audience will find, your audience will find you effortlessly. So are you ready to turn podcasting into a breeze? Click the link below and start your painless podcasting journey with us. So are you ready to turn podcasting into a breeze? It's time to get your producer on demand and start your painless journey. Remember, we're here to make podcasting simple, efficient, 
with your consumer report. All right, tell you, you have your phone? Yes. All right. I can, I'd rather just let you prove it. You know? Done, done. Let's People do be saying, oh, Doreen, you be making yeah, this stuff? I was like, uh, I, was like I hear no, it, but I got you. All right, what am I doing? All right, 15 USC. Okay. 1681A. 15U. SC. Gotcha. 1681A. 1681A. Okay. This should bring you to definition rules and construct. Yes, I'm here. All right, scroll down. Okay. You're going to see consumer reporting agencies. Yes. You see it? Yeah. I right, read the definition. The term consumer report means any written, oral, or any other communication. Of no, that's our consumer report. Oh. We, we are going to get to that one in a minute. Do you see consumer reporting agency? Uh, let me scroll down a little more. Okay. The term consumer reporting agency means any person which, for monetary fees, dues, or on a cooperative nonprofit basis, regularly engages in whole or in part the practice of assembling or evaluating consumer credit mm -hmm. information or other information on consumers for the purpose of furnishing consumer reports to third parties, this is a long definition, and which uses any means or facility of interstate commerce for the purpose of preparing or fur furnishing consumer reports. Mm -hmm. So we can stop there. Okay. So did they say anything about a credit bureau in the definition? No. Where did the word credit bureau come from? I don't know. It's made up. It doesn't exist. Double speaking, misleading the population to believe that they're a governmental entity when they're not. Why is that okay, though? Why do people use that and it's okay? Well, it's marketing. Mm. It's not that it's okay and it's not that it's not okay. You have to discern what you believe is accurate or not based on your research. Because if you just take everything that people say as well, you whatever result you end up getting, you end up getting. We're, we're, all right, they're putting out misinformation. Okay, okay, cool. But at what point do we hold people accountable to go research the information that you're getting? It's, a, it's, it's tough. That's a slippery slope. Why? Because someone is unwilling to go and do their due diligence? No. If, no. People need to do their due diligence. I'm going to give you another example. Okay. A lot of fake pages, right? A lot of fake pages. Um, was coming out using my name, different spellings. And they're asking for crypto information and send me this, I'll cash up you this. Bro, I teach consumer laws. Yeah. When do you ever hear me talking about, I'm going to send you anything for crypto or I'm going to send you anything on cash app? How often that, does that happen? That don't make, well, now it's not as much. Yeah. Before it used to happen a lot, right? But as Instagram... Um, got the verification process and all of that, it, it, it kind of went away. But my point is this. I teach consumer law. Everything on my page is consumer law related. Why would I come to you about, cri about crypto and cash app? Does that even make sense? No, no, it makes no sense. But people are still falling for it. Yeah. So at, at what point does someone become accountable? You, at what point? Do you get heat as far as like, I feel like in your industry, right, mm -hmm. if you do or if you have any misstep, people are very quick to just like jump on you, right? Well, people are quick to jump on you regardless of whatever you do. Mm. So whether you're doing good, it doesn't matter. Whether you're doing bad, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You have to be consistent about what you put out, the type of information you put out, and letting people know that, listen, I am a real person. Come catch me on this Zoom where I'm giving four to eight hours worth of game. And guess what? The fakes can't do that. Mm. Dude, I've held Zooms for eight hours, eight and a half hours, lost my voice and everything. Fakes can't do that. They don't, they don't have the content. How often do you do the Zooms? Um, I have a challenge coming up um, very soon where it's five days and over five days I'm breaking down everything regarding consumer laws and the business side of it, where I'm breaking down how to use consumer laws to start your own business, how to make money using consumer laws, how to get deletions from, for people and for yourself yeah. using consumer laws and how you can repackage those deletions to make money operating a consulting business. Mm -hmm. Hit a button for this gentleman, please. I don't know what button you have, but yeah, it's gonna work. Right? So, so um, 
there's a there's a few things, but it, at the end of the day, um, these 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 so called people online and stuff are they doing seminars? Like I got a conference coming up in September, the Credit Summit, right? Yeah. Let me just move this out of the way so are you guys good? can see it, right? Yes. Uh, over here. And it says uh, hashtag consumer law expert, just right? in case you so, can't see it. I got the credit summit coming up, right? Okay. This is a summit where consumers and credit repair business owners come together in Atlanta, Georgia. And guess what? Credit repair was illegal in the state of Georgia. Why? Equifax is here. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> uh, did, I, did I say that? Um, did I, did I, 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 I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear I, anything. I didn't hear. Did you hear anything? Nope, I didn't hear nope, anything. Nope, nope, we're good. You know, yeah. Some... some Consumer reporting agencies are there. Now, this is just my opinion. Yeah. This is just my opinion. But why is it the only state that credit repair is illegal? Like, is the state okay. where the credit bureau or the quote unquote credit bureau is at? Yeah, yeah. Like right there. That's like, a coincidence. What is your theory it's quite, on that? It's quite, it's quite a coincidence. That, that, <laughs> that, Hypothetically, that, right? What yeah. is your theory on that? <laughs> Hypothetically, obviously, everything this we're saying right now. No, what I'm about no. to say has no evidence to support. This is completely my own view. Yes. There was no research done on this. Okay. So don't come say, oh, there ain't. <laughs> nope, there's no. And remember, I only got a high school diploma. So, y'all, bachelor's degree and PhDs, I only got a high school diploma. Your opinion is welcome, but keep it to yourself. <laughs> I like that. All right. So, <laughs> so all right. It just, it's crazy that a state like, like, like Georgia, where we have so many black people, right, that's doing great yeah. financially, it's the only state that credit repair is illegal. Only lawyers and banks and nonprofits and other institutions are able to do it. Yeah. Well, what about all the other states? You don't think they think that people need to get their credit together? So, so in, in my mind is this, maybe these companies are contributing to political campaigns. Uh, mm. Like I said, this is totally my opinion. There is no substantial. It's just guesswork, guys. This is guess. guesswork. I am guessing. This is for <laughs> educational purposes only. Okay. Right? You know, it's, it's easy to donate to a campaign. As, you know, as, mm. as long as you put my laws in place. Pass this bill. Yeah. But, but think about it. Do you know that bad credit is the most profitable business in America? What do you yeah. mean by that? All right. Think about who really runs the United States. Okay. Who do you think runs the United States? Gosh, I've heard so many different stories. Um, the if business, I'm I guessing, think the businesses, the business owners and stuff, or you know, the uh, private sector. Yeah, I've business heard owners, yes, but what type of business owners? It's the type that matters. As far as like race or like status? Okay. or What happened in 1913? I don't know. All right. Yeah. It's called the Federal Reserve. Mm. Um, okay. America is run by bankers, the cartel of bankers. Mm. America isn't run by the president. Yeah, we have a president that... And knowing you, I know you chose that language for a reason. You said the cartel of well, bankers. Well, it's really what they... Right? It's a mob of bankers. Dude, a private institution that is not governmental owned, they're not even a bank, have the power private institution to print money on demand wait i'm sorry they can print money oh my god i did this is me completely. who do you think like, prints what do you think is called a federal reserve notes no idea on your on your I dollar you pull out a dollar it's wait, wait so federal the, reserve, the, the reserve is a private entity yes what does it say there I'm looking on it. It's a new hundred dollar bill. I don't know if they took it off. Okay, let's see. Left corner, left top corner. Federal Reserve note. Yeah, Federal Reserve Bank. That's not even federal, and it's not a bank. So why Double is that speaking. okay? Ask the powers to be, bro. I, I wish I could give you all the answers, but I can't. Yeah. But just know that there are federal, it's a central bank, okay. right? A central bank masquerading as a federal bank, but it's not. Because the concept and the idea of a federal, of a central bank was shut down by Washington, Lincoln, and all the other presidents. Yeah. It's the dude, um, Woodruff Wilson, 
back in 1913 that cooked up this plan with J.P. Morgan Chase, Rockefeller, Rockefeller, the Rothschilds, Carnegie. Like uh, uh, I it, hear it, you, it, but it I'm is, like, why isn't this I think, like talked about? I'm gonna be enough, honest with you. I think it is. The, is prob it? the problem is, is, is this that like my it, first it's, time hearing it. It's more so people think when they hear something like that, like what you're saying, they think of it as a conspiracy, conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy theory. Not, oh no, nah, that's not. And it's like, and it goes in one ear and out the other so quick. Like people dismiss it. This is crazy. But it's public knowledge. So when you know who runs the world now, okay, let me give you another example. Okay. Bank of America okay. got sued by the CFPB for $250 million, right? I want you to pull it up because I don't want people to think that I'm, I'm making stuff you up. You got us? He's got it. Okay. All right, cool. So we're going to pull up Bank of America sued by the CFPB for $250 million, And then I want you all to tell me what they got sued for. I, I can look it up at the same time right now. Hold up. Hold up. I'm going to show you the big difference between the banks and so people. Said, I would say bank. Bank, for bank America. of America sued by the CFPB for $250 million. CF PB. PB. I'm going to just type that in. Mm -hmm. It's like in okay, real time. So what I got right now, it says, Today, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau mm -hmm. ordered Bank of America to pay more than $100 million to, to customers for mm -hmm. systematically double dipping on fees imposed on customers with insufficient funds in their account, mm -hmm. withholding re rewards, bonuses explicitly promised to credit card customers. Mm hmm so let's talk about the fees. So that's a hundred million to consumers, but then they have to pay the CFPB another hundred and fifty million. Mm. So that's two hundred and fifty million they got sued for, right? So let's talk about the fees. Okay. Late payment fees. Overtime. Late payments Overtime. are illegal. Late payments shouldn't even be on anybody's credit. I'm gonna tackle that in a minute, yes. right? Now let's talk about how they make money from this. Okay. Late payments come from what? The application of mispayments, right? So yeah. you have to quote unquote miss a payment for a late payment to arise. Well, what happens if the banks intentionally applied mispayments? Mm. Late payments happen. With late payments come what? Late payment fees. And with late payment happening now, what else happens? Your interest rate goes up. Think oh. about it. These are in your terms and condition. You miss a payment, it's $25 late payment, right? Late payment fee. And then if you do that, your interest rate now may go up double digits. This is so messed up. But they told you about it. You just didn't pay attention to it. I mean, who really pays attention though? And like, whose fault like, is that? I mean, <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. You're Ignorance right. is bliss. No, but the thing Come is on. like, for example, right? You download an app on Apple. Mm. No one's looking through terms and conditions. Whose problem is that? It's not Apple. Right. People That's bank right. on the on the, the the fact that you're not going to read the fine print. They, they know they you're know. not going to read it. <laughs> they put it right there, out there for you. It, it's your job and due diligence and responsibility to read the thing. They can't be held. I feel like I, I mean they put small print too. It's like small uh, zoom. Really Everybody got an iPhone. You can <laughs> zoom. It. This is facts. You I'm can just zoom. Saying, it's like uh, they really want to read this. All right, let me ask you this. That's then. what happens. So they make it aesthetically unappealing. They, bro, they spend millions in marketing. Damn. Like, it, it, it's, not, it's not a coincidence that it's so small. Yeah. Oh, right? Heard. It's not a coincidence that it's so small. It's not a coincidence. Where's my thingy? Y'all be seeing me putting this right online. This is real. This is happening in real time, guys. Real time. Hey, I right? messed up time in the beginning, time. too, just so you know. We didn't cut anything. Right. Good, but, um, so this is intentional. It's not, oh, we're going to try. No, they spend millions and billions of dollars in market research. See. All right. Let's take it a step further. Okay. You missed payment. Now you got a late payment fee. Now you got a late payment fee. You got a higher interest rate. So now when you're making your minimum payments, most of it is going to where? Interest. Interest, yeah. Not to principal. Come on, follow the, so the follow the breadcrumbs. Come on. I'm, I'm, it's like I'm low key. I'm mad at myself because I feel like I've fell into that trap a couple times where I don't See? look at the fine print, but I just say, okay, cool, I can make it. All right. Whatever. But now like, let's talk about the other fee. Okay. Overdraft fees. Oh. Thirty five dollars. 
right? And now let's talk about, um, we talk about the interest rate, we talked about the missed payments, now we're talking about the overdraft fees, and then let's talk about the minimum balance fee. Well, we know that 90 per, America has 330 million people, right? Yeah. And 65% live paycheck to paycheck. So that's roughly about 165 million people gotcha. living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Well, 165 million people living to paycheck to paycheck. Well, they're making only minimum payments on credit cards. They are going to miss a payment. They don't have the money to fight these corporations when they say, oh, you got a late payment. You know you weren't late. But Bank of America is saying, oh, you were late, you were late, and we're not going to change your information on your consumer report. If you don't know consumer laws, this is how they get away with that. Oh, this is so bad. Um, you have me hating the system right now. Don't hate the system. Learn the game. Mm. Hit a button. Like you you want to hit a hate a system. No, learn the game of the system and play the same game. How does, see, so like, essentially, It's just like... like Hold on, I'm gonna cut all of y'all. Yeah, right? no, no, do your no, thing. No, no, go for it. It's just cut, like cut. this. Let him cut. Right? I'm, let me, I'm, I'm gonna cut you off for this yeah. reason. It's just like poor people saying, "Oh, I hate rich people." Mm. Why the hell are you gonna hate rich people? Oh, they got too much money. That's none of your damn business. How about you learn and go read what rich people are doing so you can become rich yourself? Hit a button. Yeah. Hit a button. Bing bang. That's Remember that guy we was at the podcast convention, uh, the summit, and a guy walks up to us and he's giving game. He's giving game. And one of the biggest things he said, he goes, you know, the way things are, the way they have it mapped out is what the government does. They'll put a puzzle piece. Think of it as a puzzle piece mm -hmm. or a big puzzle. They'll put pieces here, 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 mm -hmm. here, here. It's up to you to figure out where that puzzle piece is and where to place it in conjunction with all the other puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. and, and that's basically kind of what you're saying yeah, right now. Yeah, the information is there. Thinking is the hardest thing most people never do. Mm -hmm. People don't mm -hmm. think. That's number one. People worse don't read. Dude, I deployed in 2020. Okay. I was in Kuwait. I read 140 books. 140 books? Correct. What were you reading? Everything business, credit, finances, and taxes. What gave you the interest in that before? I was tired of being broke and I had bad credit. Mm. Okay. I was sick and tired of 140 it. 140 books though? Yes. That's a lot of books, dude. How much, how much are you willing to invest in yourself? Dude, I became a millionaire. So 140 books, Yeah. became a millionaire. Obviously there's something in these damn there's books the that there. changed everything about what I was doing. And a side question to that, do you think reading a book and listening to a book is the same thing? Um, yeah, but if you, when you pair them up together, it takes you to a whole different level. Oh, so you do both? Yeah, I listen to the audio book and read the book at the same time. Mm, you know, Alex actually said, Alex Hermosi. I learned it from Alex Hermosi. He was, um, was it? Um, was 100 it million offers. Yes, Correct. which he has the leads coming out, which I can't wait for. Like Alex, stop holding the book hostage. <laughs> like, like, Alex, like I, hope, I, I hope you see this. Yo, everybody tag, like this clip, yeah. tag Alex Hermosi. Alex, we're waiting for the book. Stop holding the book hostage. I need the book. I read 100 million offers 10 times. I listened to this book going to sleep. I need the other book. I like it. So if gentle people in the internet universe, <laughs> if you can take this clip and tag Alex, please, and tell him to give us the damn book. Yes. I want the book. Needed. I don't care if it's $500. I need the book. Thank you, Alex. That book <laughs> is going to be, honestly, in my opinion, I think that book is going to be the book of the decade. Uh, give me the damn book, Alex. Shh. I don't need, just, just the book could it. be $1,000. I don't care. Just, just give me the damn book. What's the biggest lesson or biggest takeaway you've taken from Alex Ramosi? Because I feel like I've learned a lot of game from him. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said before, it's his free stuff is 10 times better than everyone's paid stuff. What's your offer, the biggest takeaway? Your offer. Um, curate your offer and know who your avatar is so you can market to your avatar. A lot of Bing times... Bang. A lot of times, a lot of people try to have their message appeal to everyone and appeal to no one. Mm. But if you take the time out to know who you are servicing, who you're selling your products to, then now you can create a specialized marketing messaging specifically for your avatar. That's the toughest part though, right? When you're first starting, right? You don't know mm. much about entrepreneurship. The hardest thing is that you feel like you're leaving out people. 
right? No. You, first start, you, never, ha- you never had that in no, the beginning? No, no, no. I, I was trying to get everybody. Uh-huh. And that's why I wasn't making no damn money. What but then... You, what switched? Myron, Doreen, you need to know who you're talking to. Mm. Right? So I, I, I now learn who I'm talking to. And then I paid um, to, to get coaching live. In front of seven thousand people, bro. I'm sorry, in front of seven thousand. No, I got, I got, I, I, I um, got a mentor, right? That coached me live in front of seven thousand people. How do you get coaching for the seven thousand? Online, people? How taking was that? my business apart. How did you feel at the time? I, I'm crying. I'm literally see, crying that, on that's Zoom. The difference between somebody who's going to make a million dollars three months after than somebody that's not. Mm. I didn't care. T- if I know. That the, this person has the formula for success. Yeah. Ain't no way I'm going to sit down. And you didn't try feel to vulnerable, think. though? Like, he's tearing me up right now in front of everybody. It's cool. I, I was the one who instigated it. I need to know. I was making six figures. Okay. Cool. How do I make seven figures? I don't have that information. Coach me so I can get there. And in my mind, I know that I was going to use this coaching um, this this coaching to put back now in my university to coach my students that come into my high ticket program on how you need to shift gears from five to six figures and from six to seven figures. So you knew ahead of time you you were mentally prepared for it. Correct. I do you think most people are though? Like no. for example, right? You'll have people that come up to you like, I need help with this and this and this. Mm-hmm. What I've realized is most people aren't ready for the answer. There are n- a lot of people are not ready for But the you truth. were. Especially women. And this is no offense to y'all. <laughs> but y'all will be like, tell me the truth. You can handle the truth. <laughs> like, like people often ask things to which they do not want the answer I for. I agree with you. And I have this argument with this gentleman over here, right? He was like, honesty is the key to everything. I'm like, that's not true. Because most people say they want honesty. True. I don't believe they want honesty. They don't. For example, I know I need to be lied to sometimes. <laughs> I know it sounds terrible, right? For example, if I do something and I just uh-huh. need my ego boost, I don't want you to tear it down. I, well, okay. Am I wrong? <laughs> Let me give I you to tear it down. I mean, it I give me give you some context. I believe in telling the truth, given the fact you know who your audience is. You know what I mean? Like if you know who you're talking to and they deserve the truth, give them the truth. You know what I mean? What do you mean I deserve mean, the truth though? That's a slippery slope. I'm saying most people don't even want the truth. They say they want it, they don't want the truth. Give it to them anyway. Honestly, just tell me the truth. How do you really feel? You got to give it to them anyway. I rather be I, truthful from the jump. Right. It means now you can make an informed decision, whatever you want to do. The last thing I want to hear is, oh, you never told me this, and I could have did this. Right. No, I'm going to give it to you from the jump, yeah. make your decision what you want to do after you got the information. Honesty? I remember the first time I asked for honesty, and I got it. And I was like, I didn't really want to know all that. You <laughs> That's know what, what I'm saying. But, I mean, but it, it, it depends. It really <laughs> don't want the truth. You really don't. It, de- it depends on the person. You know what I mean? It took, I took all of that, and I, I went home, and I was just like, wow, I really am. I'll use a left example. I'm not doing Am what I the best be sex you ever had? Guys ask that question to girls, right? For example, mm-hmm. do they really want the answer to that question? Yeah, yeah, I want it. Yeah, I don't want the answer to that question. Why not? I want you to lie to me. Why if not? I ask you that because if I'm, <laughs> it'll kill my self confidence. No, you're looking at it the wrong way. Let me Hit give me. you a totally different perspective. Hit me. So if I'm a six out of ten on the scale, right? Okay. Okay, and you've experienced ten to your knowledge. Yeah. What is the difference of that four mm-hmm. percent? I need you to teach me now. And tell me exactly what happened, why there's a 4% difference. So now when I learn that 4%, you don't need to lie to me anymore. I'm blowing your whole back out. Mm, hit a button. That I, no, I get it. I get it. But for the person, there's what, what I guess what Tanny is saying, for the people who hear that, no, they don't, they, they just get so stuck on the, no, you're trash. For the record. Not, not even, you not, don't, they don't think have like them. most people do. Right. To his point, you don't think like most people do. You're thinking of how to improve. Most people just get defensive when you attack what they attach. No, their I, identity I gave to. you my all. I, <laughs> I, did the best. I don't think of improving. You're, you're, you can always better your best. Yeah. Right. So I'm always in a constant state of improving. There you go. Shit. If my head game girl is not the best, 
tell me do i need to make circles do i need to flick up and so, down do i need to have suction love. like tell me how this shit works so i have a question for you did you always have that get better mentality was that something that was taught to you with like you know military and you say you was in the military yeah was but that- i'm just always like this i i'm i've been naturally curious as far as i can go i was taking vcrs y'all know what vcrs are uh yeah, like we, uh, we, we put the tape we're yeah, up there in y'all, the age y'all new it, kids yes. yeah these we're, new kids don't even know what a vcr <laughs> we got facial they don't hair even know yeah, yeah we, we got facial we, hair they, they we 80s know babies what a CD <laughs> player is or a cassette player right <laughs> so so as far as i can remember dude at three to four years old i was taking apart vcrs bro i've been a curious child all my life mm. so i'm always constantly looking how to better my best and to improve my game how do you coach people though knowing the fact that they don't innately have your curiosity yeah, it's that's the something question. that can be installed. Yeah, okay. the mind is like a software, or it's like a motherboard. You can always upgrade the software, mm. right? So, the key to upgrading any software is the mind, right? So, when we talk about people, um, you need to expose people to different ways of thinking because society tells them go to school, get a job work 40 hours a week for 40 years, then retire on 40% off your pension, which is total bullshit because where does inflation comes in? Mm, it's big How big. much do we pay for eggs right now? Uh, last time I bought eggs, I think it was like six bucks for a dozen. E- eggs, maybe? right? Yeah. It's the same damn egg. 15 years ago, how much that egg was? Same egg. A dollar ninety nine. Same egg. And 30 years prior to that, how... Much was eggs. Probably cents. half. I was in less since. Yeah. But it's the same damn egg. It's the same milk. What happened? Let me ask you a question. How do you feel about, because I'm um, only asking this because a friend was really excited about it. It's like they're doubling up on my 401k. How do you feel about 401ks, for example? Scams. Mm, walk me through this. All right. Why? So you're supposed to put money away, right? And... Before we even do that, do we know how the 401 case came about? I don't. See, people, a lot honest. of people did, didn't even look how. Before 401 case, companies used to have what is called um, DB, direct, I think it's direct benefits. Okay. Right? And direct benefits meaning that, um, you know, they'll work for a company and then when they retire, the company will take care of them for the rest of their life. Gotcha. Well, that wasn't a great business model. Then they switched it to DC, which is direct contribution, where, you know, contribute to it and the employers now match that 401k. Okay. Now, you're supposed to be putting funds away. Who is the manager of the 401k, by the way? I don't know. Nobody knows. You know? Prudential. Okay, that's a company. Yeah. Who's managing your money? I have no oh, idea. nobody knows. Nobody knows. All right. Individual co- pre- people within the company? I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> right? But do we know that it's James or John or Derek that's managing it? No. Nobody knows. And then, do you know the amount of fees that are in there? And how do you even know that what's going in and all these fees that you're paying are legitimate fees? Where does all of these fees come from? Does it require so many fees to manage a 401k? And then... You can't touch it until you're 62. Is it, oh. oh. What the do, hell am I going to do? do? You're, you're, pen, you're penalized. What, what am I going to do at 62? First of all, I can't climb a damn tree. <laughs> I can't go <laughs> do all the things that I could if I was young. Yeah. So now I'm putting this away, putting all of this nest egg away, right? For a day that might never come because what? We, can, we could die before it even hits. And then... I don't know if you're able to transfer your 401k to your kids. Can If you die, right, does the company that have your 401k, do they pass it on to your wife and kids? Um, I think you can make a, uh, you can put down a beneficiary for your benefits. And I think yeah. your, four, for your 401k is, is with that. Okay, yeah. hypothetically, let's say that happens, then, okay. right? And we're able to do that. All right, that part is cool. Now, let's talk about um, the taxes. Mm. Mm. Are we going lower in taxes or is taxes getting more? Taxes is getting higher. It's getting higher, right? Yeah. So if taxes are getting higher, it simply means that later on at 60 years old, you're going to be paying more taxes on those funds that should have been taxed less 30, 40, 60 years ago when you was working, right? And if I meet an emergency right now, 
I, I can't get access to it. Because if I do take it out now, boom, I'm pen- how, how am I penalized on my own money? It almost seems like the money that you're getting, right, that the company is giving you, adding on to it, is going to be taken away by taxes. <laughs> and you don't even get access to it, just judging what you're... It actually makes no sense. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm rethinking my whole life. Right. right. I'm like, because people get excited, like, yeah, I got this. My foot. They matching. Oh like, yeah, you yeah. got this mm-hmm. in your. I keep thinking that, dude. Who has access to the pension fund? I'm rethinking everything right now. For the record, think, so I'm think, just like, we don't think about these things. We blindly give ourselves over to Wall Street and to these bankers. And, and and they just do whatever they want. But the thing is, right, especially in our culture, right, we have, when we believe something, we believe it very deeply, right? Where did that belief come from? I don't know. That's the problem uh, yeah. people I don't, don't ask. Know. No, you're not questioning. Where did it. that belief come from? All right, know. let me give you another one. Okay. Jesus. Okay. Who is Jesus? Uh, God's son, I guess. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The word Jesus didn't exist when Yahweh was on the planet. Yeshua. Mm. Right? When Yahshua and Yahweh, so Yahweh is God, right? Yahshua is Jesus. Okay. Quote, unquote, Jesus, right? Yeah. Well, who is this Jesus fellow? And why does this Jesus fellow have blonde hair, blue eyes, and is white? Well, they, 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 they changed the blonde hair. Now he has, he's a brunette. He's a but brunette. He, but, he, but he's, but he's, he's go, still white. How he's did still he go white. from blonde to brunette? <laughs> I don't know. That's wild. Um, wait, what, what was Jesus? Oh, actually? Yeah. Now, now, now I have to ask because Africa. I, I personally don't know. Men, so men, he was a black dude. Afri- yes. Long hair and everything? Melanated. Or? It was melanated. Was he long hair? Yes. Like, yes. He had dreads. Sheesh. Bro, I need to do some research because I feel like... I don't know enough. But 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 society took yeah took Yahshua and made him into a western a western image now. Oh, I'm laid out like this. I Would you say it's western eyes. or just more European? European western it's yeah. the same it's the same pot of soup. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Are we saying Jesus was black? He was my complexion. He's not Jesus. 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 Yeshua was was yes. was a, Jesus is a was a, mel- person. was a melanated person. So they Jesus changed the name, changed how he person. looked. Essentially, they changed his look, changed the name, changed his whole image. They whitewashed him. You know who? You know who actually uh, a, a world leader that actually uh, um, accepts the the black Jesus. Mm-hmm. You guys know who that is? A world leader? Yeah, world leader that, that accepts no. the black Jesus. Go to Russia. There you go. Is it go to Russia. It is. And see who is over there. Wait, what is Russia? Well, I'm sorry. What does Russia's do Yeshua look like? Black. Really? Yeah. They huh. they worship a black Jesus. You would never know. You get this is is documented. It's on camera. It's on videotape. The Pope himself is seen inside the Vatican kneeling and praying to the black Mary with the black child. You know, you gotta, you gotta this think. is crazy. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying like, I know I feel like most of the people watching right now, like this is really a thing. Go look it up. Uh, I, I don't doubt it. It's just. Jesus is a fake name for a fake person with a fake identity that didn't exist. I'm afraid to even touch on Christmas now. Because we, we, yeah, we don't gotta go. I'm there. afraid. No, no. I'm just saying. Christmas example, or right, Easter. Someone said the other day the whole Xmas thing was to be able to take Christ out of you know, um, I guess the holiday, like Xmas, Happy Xmas, as opposed to Christmas. Well, yeah, they want. Well, to he's that, not even a yeah. part of it. Christmas is a whole another pagan holiday. Yeah, sure. First of all, Jeez. Yahshua okay. was not born in Christmas. He was not. He was born okay. in the, like the summer. He was not right. So Christmas is a follow up for Easter. The Easter bunny, the Easter egg. Dude, this stuff goes way back, man. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. On How did you find out about all this stuff? I read a lot. A lot. 140 bucks. Got you. A lot. That's crazy, man. Can we it's... echo? A lot, <laughs> not, not. a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. All right. So let's go back now to the miseducational, misdirectional right, system, go. right? All right. What do we know so far? They make up a lot of words and they use double speaking to mislead people to say one thing when they mean another. Okay. All right. Cool. We know that. We know that they tell us that credit bureaus exist when, in fact, the definition and their laws show that there is no such thing as a credit bureau. The only bureau mentioned in those definitions 
is the Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection. That is the only away, bureau. How do they get away with that, though? In the sense that, like, you have people like you that understand how it works? We don't understand because we're not under anyone's stand. We comprehend, we acknowledge. Mm. We do not understand. We're not under no one's authority. Mm. I like that. That's a button. Yep. That was Bing deep. That was deep. <laughs> that was deep. I see what you did there. That was good. Um, I guess for me, it's just... But before we go, I want to make something clear because yeah. when you touch this this idea of the religious thing, guys, what I'm telling... I'm not telling y'all that I don't believe in God. Let me make this abundantly clear. I believe in a super... A supernatural being that is the architect of everything. The word Jesus did not exist when Yahshua walked the face of the earth. Mm. He, he's not white. He doesn't have blonde hair and blue eyes. That's on every calendar in people's homes. You go to the churches, you're seeing a white figure with blonde or brunette hair. That is not, that is fake news. And a lot of you, I'm going to say, oh, the rain, don't do, don't twist my words, internet. Do not twist my words. This is facts. He was not white. He did not have black, um, blonde hair. He did not have blue eyes. Melanated God. He's a melanated God that was on the earth. That's my point. Don't be changing my narrative. You know what's Don't crazy? Don't do it. People are going to hear you right now, right? And they've always seen Jesus as this person. Jesus as they know, right? They've always seen as this person. So you saying that alone. I'm not is saying anything. This is facts. No, 100%. What I'm saying is you're going to flip a lot of perspectives by just saying that alone. Um, I'm actually rethinking a lot of it because I think when I was growing up, I used to think of Jesus the same way. You know that's I mean? the that's how we were indoctrinated. We go into the church. The first thing we're seeing is Jesus on a cross, right? Where in the Bible does it say we should pray to a cross? Isn't that considered idolatry? When you go back to Moses and they had the calf and the cows and all these things, the gold ones that they were praying to, that was deemed idolatry. Yeah. Thou shalt not have no other God but me. Where did this Jesus come from? It's in the book. I'm not making anything up. These are words that is in the book. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word became flesh. This is in their book. I, mean, I don't know what to hit. I don't know what to hit. I'm going to hit up. Bing bong. There that, we go. That works. I mean, that's a button. This is crazy. Um, I'm a little mind blown at the same time. I do want to touch on credit, but to your point, um, I'm kind of rethinking the way I used to, like growing up, right? I was a uh, seven day in Venice, mm -hmm. right? And some, even... The Jesus they had, Jesus, it was considered Jesus, was blonde, blue eyes. I'm talking, you're talking to a guy that came from Africa, mm -hmm. like, born and raised in Zimbabwe. Jesus was the same way there. So I'm actually thinking about it. Why is it that in a country that's predominantly black, we're still praising a white, quote unquote, Jesus? You know what I mean? Really? So now I'm actually you're thinking wondering about it. why? Well, I mean, now it's starting to make sense. I'm piecing it together in real time, but it's just like, wow, that's All right. crazy. There is, let me, let me find it. There, there, there's a thing, right? Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to drop this bomb right here and, and then we're going to move on to credit. There's a section of the Bible. It speaks about how slaves should. Should honor their masters. Honor their masters. And be be happy that they are slaves. And what stuff like what that. book is that? Oh, I'm gonna find it right now. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna find Same it. Same verses that they use against the slaves now. And it, it, don't you find it so ironic? Did they? Yeah. Don't you find it ironic that for 400 years we we couldn't read, we couldn't read for 400 years, right? Yeah. So Peter two eighteen. Right, so Peter two eighteen okay. says a go a good slave is a good Christian. Right? Slaves obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of the heart, just as you would obey Christ. Does it say slaves in that verse? Go, dude, pull up King James. I don't want people to be thinking I'm making this stuff up. Pull up the King James and read what it says. Peter 2, verse 18. This opens a whole nother, like. We couldn't read. Right? We were, imagine, 
white people saying you cannot read it is illegal to read and you will be lynched hanged or killed for reading why for reading why knowledge but the first book they gave us was a bible Mm -mm. control why not a book on economy we've we've built the country we built the whole country why not now give us a book on economy Right? The skills that we've learned. Okay, so you've been picking cotton for 50 years. Okay, how do I go start my own cotton plantation? Why not book on, on economy so now we can go and thrive as a people? Control. So, just they didn't want cl- you to. So for clarity, as far as the Bible, how... This is a tough question to ask, right? Because the Bible is written by different people. How accurate is the Bible? Is it, though? That's what I'm saying. So that's it's what not written nervous. by different people. It's not. It's written by a person, but that person that wrote it used different texts from different people and different manuscript. So uh, it's going to be a controversial take, and I'll take it. How do we know how accurate it is? There you go. You don't. Who decides what gets put in? Who decide what doesn't make it? Why are we finding Black Sea Scrolls? Why is the Book of Enoch not in there? What is the Maccabees Bible not in there? It's in the Ethiopian Bible. Ah. How did you know that? It's impressive. I do, I do my... I no, read. No, I'm I, do, I, I read and I listen. I'm I not want, saying you're I not want, smart enough. Like, I didn't I want say... And I know a lot of people... I know a lot of people are going to say a lot of things now, right? Yeah. But I want you to think. Who authorize the production of said book? I couldn't tell you. The Pope. The only, person, Pope? The, the only person that had authority to at the time. But look how many times the Bible have changed over the years. What yeah, is this? Version. What's changing so much? Right. There's translations and then there's, there's this version. and this, this, it's, it's, A Bible from 1816 is different from the Bible. No. What, what, what changed? What changed... Go look, go look it up yourself. Yeah. Go look, look up an 1816 Bible compared to the Bible now. What, what happened? So, okay, so my question is now, <laughs> at this point with all this information, now that I have overwhelm, how do you know how to move? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you God, know how to temp- navigate anything at this point? The Bible says the temple of God is in you, right? Which means that God dwelleth within you. This is why meditation is so important. You have to go on your own journey. Mm -hmm. You cannot just take what people are telling you. You can't. Go on your own journey of spiritualization. Go on your own journey of um, self-development. Go on your own journey of self-recognization. And go connect with the creator. Like, leave the noise alone. Leave the noise alone. You have to be really deep as far as like um, just listening to your intuition. Just you like have being to. really close, yeah. Go on a prayathon, go on a pray marathon where you're really establishing a connection. Yeah. I don't need to go to church to establish a connection with God. Yeah. I don't need to. Oh, well, I, 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 I have to agree. I, no, I, I'm not disagreeing. It's just, it, it's, I 100% agree with you. There's just no template for it. It's like customized for each person. So you can't give people advice on, listen to your intuition. Most people be like, so how do I do that? And, and meditation, like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta quiet the mind so you can receive the fasting. Word. It's yeah. the hack, and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of not fasting, but it's something that I want to get into, right? Fasting is a hack. It's, it's. I hear Kevin Gates talk about it. Yeah. Right. Fasting is the hack. Nineteen Keys talk about it. All the greats they talk about it. like. You want to establish a connection with the supreme being. So what, so what about fasting actually brings you that connection? It's clarity. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are Muslims. And when they go on Ramadan, it's one of the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Like, I, I think that Ramadan, yeah. like, I think it should be mandatory, bro. Mm. Like, the, the way... The way they do it, the, the way they do 
the devotion. Have you ever seen a Muslim prayed? Yes. It is I, the I most it beautiful is thing I have ever seen. It's a lot of passion. It's just They wash the hands, they wash the feet, they have the mat, it's all laid down, and it's such a spiritual process. Like I'm just I'm just giving you all what like it's no, one of the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. You know what's cuz I've done um for example, not fasting on purpose, but I've done diets where it's like, don't eat for 48 hours. Like intermittent, intermittent fasting. Yeah, I've done it before. And the clarity that you get is just different. Not that I did it for like a spiritual purpose, mm -hmm. but the 48 hours, dude, you think about things you never even thought of. Like, it's weird. It's weird to describe. I, I almost recommend just man. doing it just to see. I'm... I'm, Y'all like, dude, like <laughs> I'm thinking about getting some food right now. Yeah, like, like, I'm, hungry. Like, I'm, hungry. I'm gonna burn. I'm telling you, no, but you get clarity, like okay. crazy clarity on whatever. So I mean, y'all like, really want to go down this rabbit hole? Okay. Yes, like we yes. can. We're here. Go for it. We're here. Yes. Uh, right. Before we go down the rabbit hole, hold on. Okay, I gotta give some people some game on the credit first, because yeah. I'm telling you, like this stuff, I study a lot. Okay, and and what what I wanna what I wanna tell anybody that's watching this right now. Don't take nothing that I am saying. Don't take nothing that any of us is saying. Just, just a little bit of effort. Go do some research. That's mm. it. Before you start jumping in the comments and talking shit, just go do a little research. Just go. Go research the Federal Reserve Bank. It's a central bank. Go, reser go research 1913 when they sneaked a bill into Congress when all the Congress was away in, the, in Christmas. Yeah. That's how it got passed. Go do your research on the banks that own America. Go do your research on the Wells Fargo $3.7 billion lawsuit because they illegally repossessed people's car, um, put people out on foreclosure, misapplied payments, getting people late payment fees, and all of these things. Go research it. And they got away with it. What, what are, all right, let me ask you this, right? Because... Go, like, go research it. I mean, I mean you, you... The thing is, right, you get advice from people, right? Now I'm saying that you get advice from people that really don't know what they're talking about, right? What are Trust some of the verify. bigger misconceptions mm. that you hear most common. trust but verify mm -hmm. i'm gonna trust what you're saying but i need to go verify 100 percent. do not take nothing that i'm saying as truth go do the and that's why when i when i come on podcasts and when i give the game i'm citing sources go do the research you're i'm not, not just one making of those it dudes. up that's yeah. just gonna tell you a whole bunch of stuff and you don't know where i'm getting my information from yeah. i'm not that type of dude research exactly what i'm saying so back to your question tell me your question again no as far as like misconceptions because there's a bunch that i've learned that i've had in the past mm -hmm. um for example it was like my credit's done i can never fix it mm -hmm. i fixed it from when i came out of college i had a 480 bumped it up to a 750 in less than a year mm -hmm. by just ignoring all i had a mentor to be fair mm -hmm. right and it was like yeah you can fix this 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 and he did it. And I was like, this is crazy. This yeah. is completely but, against what everyone told me. See, mentors are the shortcut to success. But you're going to hear people say online, oh, it's a scam. Don't do it. You're going to hear people say that the biggest scam is school, bro. Mm -hmm. Hit a button. Yes, right? I agree with you. Why do you say that? The biggest scam is school. All right. This is definitely going to be controversial for the record. So, for those of you who are wondering, I do drink with my pinky up. I am very classy. <laughs> so, before y'all come talk shit, I got my pinky up. Mandatory. Mm -hmm. 100%. Okay, school is a scam. All right. Why is school a scam? You go to school to get a job, right? Yeah. You're going to spend high five figures into six figures going to school. But then you come out of school making low five figures, right? So bad. And then... We're talking about 30%, 35% on taxes from that low, from that low five figures, right? And then now we're talking about, all right, we're going to put it on deferment forever, I right, bet. But then now there comes a time when it has to come out and then everything comes rushing back in. All the interest rate, all the payments you never made and you still have it to pay off. So now you end up, you, do you know that even if you go bankrupt, the student loan stays. It does. You, like, Why is that the stickiest? Why is that the one that sticks one no matter biggest, what? It's one of the other biggest business in America. Really? Yeah. 
I can go create a billion dollar company, file bankruptcy, but I have a $50,000 student loan and it will not go nowhere. Why? <laughs> because the thing is, right, you make that decision before you are actually a full adult, right? So for example, if you decide to pull out a student loan, mm -hmm. right, as a student, mm -hmm. you're not mature all the way in the head. We but have, why is that the stick? We have kids making adult decisions. So bad. All right. Now they got to live with it for the rest of their life. Now they got to live with it for the rest of their life. So now we're talking about you going to school. Oh, I want to be a ballerina. Then you go take out a loan for a ballerina because at five years old, you like to dance. But then reality slaps you in the face and you need that. I, I probably need to become a business owner or probably need to learn something else. Like now we're going into the information era where we've been in there, but we're now going into the computing and the AI. Maybe you need now a degree in software engineering, mm -hmm. but you done paid for a whole ballerina bachelor's degree of and art. And, and, and now you want to go IT and now you got that, that student loan that you're paying back. You're going to take another one to get another degree. Mm -hmm. So now you got more degrees oh than a thermometer, right? And <laughs> so bad. That was good though. Hit a button. You said more degrees than a thermometer. Bing, bang. Hit a button. So 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 think of, and this isn't me knocking anybody with degrees, guys. I want you to get what I'm saying. Yeah. Be intentional about what you're doing, right? But we want kids to make grown-up decisions. Well, the thing is, right? Life changes, right? Everything changes mm -hmm. really quickly. So the thing is, you're being forced to make a quick decision about your entire life at a super early age. When something could change, for example, take AI. You brought up AI a second mm -hmm. ago, right? Right now, education is going to change completely mm -hmm. in the sense that when we were going to school, it's more so memorization, mm -hmm. you know? But now it's almost becoming obsolete Prompt because of AI. Now. Exactly. So now I paid 60 grand to learn this. Hey, are you a coach, consultant, or entrepreneur ready to launch your podcast, but overwhelmed by the process? From recording to editing to distribution and promotion, it can feel like a mountain to climb. But what if launching your podcast didn't have to be so difficult? What if launching your podcast could be um painless? Introducing Painless Podcasting's podcast launch program. They handle everything from remote recording to editing, distribution, and even social media management, all tailored for your unique needs. And right now, they're offering 15% off their podcast launch program. Just use the promo code LAUNCH15 at checkout to receive 15% off your first month. With Painless Podcasting, you can focus on your message while they handle all the technicalities. Painless Podcasting, simplifying podcast launches for busy professionals. Sign up today and make your podcast launch painless. Painless Podcasting, simplifying podcast launches for busy professionals. Sign up today and make your podcast launch painless. And to learn this, and now anyone else can do it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, number one, being a parent now, I don't even know how y'all are doing it right now. Shout out to y'all parents out there, because... I don't know. I don't even know how you navigate that. Oh, Number two, I navigate. How <laughs> how do you even know what to tell your kids to get into at this point in time? Like, how how do you navigate it? Parents need to recognize kids' latent ability. Mm. What are they naturally good at? If the kid's naturally good at sports, feed the kid sports stuff. Feed the kid that environment, right? Yeah. If the kid's good at solving stuff, feed the kids engineer type of stuff give them legos give them puzzles give them stuff to build if they love to read give them books spend the time to find out what your child genius is like my son loves abc's one and he's seven yeah right loves abc's one two threes he love how to count um like he'll he'll just watch numbers all day he loves numbers. Mm. So I'm buying books give him, uh, given to him. I'm buying numbers. I'm buying Lego. Stuff to stimulate the growth of his mind and what he likes to do. Yeah. But I know he likes a break because he likes to go to Dave and Buster's. So that's his reward. Give me some good stuff. Read this book. Do your homework. We go to Dave and Buster's. Mm. So you really have to be present. Correct. Yeah. It's not that you really have to be present. Have this system in place because if I'm not present, his mom can get it done. 
right? If his mom's not there and his grandma's up here from Jamaica, they can go. I'll send him an Uber, right? Like go that. to Dave and Buster's, go have a great time, and come back. So it, it's, it's recognizing, but see, there's a bigger issue here. Okay. And the bigger issue is a lot of the parents together are not in the homes. Mm. So no, the dads are not in the homes. Um, because this young girl made very bad decisions, right? Opened up for everybody. Now they got one, two, three, four, five baby daddies. And none of these guys are there. And now we're talking now, she's working two jobs to make ends meet. Now the dad's on child support, right? So now we're talking about a system now that is that is really tearing families apart, which is the child support system. It is a mm-hmm. disgusting system where, where the child support system benefits from child support because the federal government pays the states for, for effective collection practices. So now we're talking about the state now. They don't have no, th- their intention is not to have a happy home. They're not going to get funded from the federal government for child support. The more child support they collect, the more they get rewarded or they get funded. They're almost incentivized to do They are. That, 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 that. They, they, I, are. they are. I said uh, that on a, on a other podcast and everybody looked at me like I had a, a, a big ass zit on my Your forehead. delivery was not as good, but I remember that. Uh, I remember okay, that. So Your delivery is very abrasive, but the thought actually makes sense now. I the think. child support was never created to benefit the custodial parent or the child. Child support was created to to reward states for effective child collection child for il, for effective collection of child support right so it was so created bad. to to reimburse the federal government for the welfare programs that's why it falls under title 4 we had um tj what's his name um on instagram um, tj uh, he don't, had, uh, child support is illegal or something illegal, like yeah, that. yeah. Uh, we had him on the podcast it's unconstitutional and what law requires the natural person to support the federal government? None. This stuff is crazy right now. There is no law. People get stuck for 18 years because they don't ignorance. Ignorance. because they don't read and they don't know. I don't know. The thing is, right? What I didn't know all this okay, information. Okay, let me let me, across, let me shed some other light. I didn't know. All right. The child support system, right? It's not judges. It's not real judges that's doing it, and the ones that are doing it. They're getting paid. So they have a financial interest already in the case. It's an unbiased, it's a very, it's, I'm not, I was about to say unbiased. It's a buy it, like you're going in handicapped. How, how come attorneys don't help with this though, right? Some do, it's just not a lot. Uh, so bad. This is wild. That's why I don't have kids. <laughs> that's, no, that's kids, the reason kids are no, great I, I love kids I want five more yeah but what how many I'm, do you currently have right now you yeah, one okay but what I'm saying is we need to learn the game that's the, the problem is we're not spending time to learn the game right the game of credit okay right well, speaking of that give us some tips right now as far as just credit in general mm-hmm. give us maybe one or two actionable tips someone can use right now to fix their situation well, with credit because I feel like people almost feel handicapped right now. Like, I can't fix my credit, I can't. Which I know is a misconception. Mm -hmm. Um, What's just some easy tips people can do right now to fix their situation? First of all, everybody can fix their credit, 100%. So the first way you can go about fixing your credit is going to my YouTube channel, right? Mm. Darain Delevante, D-A-R-A-I-N-E, D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E. Go to my YouTube. My free content is better than people's paid content. That's mm. number one. Number two is I made an ebook about FICO and how I uh, cracked the code to perfect credit when I was deployed. I built an 800 credit score three times in one year. Jeez. So all they got to do is text the word FICO, F-I-C-O, to 917-993-5238. So all you got to do is text the word FICO to 917-993-5238. And link is obviously going to be right in front of you right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I'll send you guys the yeah, link yeah. and everything too. The next thing is every consumer, every person can fix their own credit. Mm. Every one of you. The issue is y'all are not willing to take the time to learn it. 
something as important as credit that affects every dynamic of your life you want a microwave fix when you took 10 15 and 20 years yeah, working this to mess it up like how do you expect <laughs> it to get fixed in 30 days something that you took years yeah. to, to 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 destroy and this is where the scams come in this is where people are telling them oh you know i can wipe everything in 30 days and this is why there's so much cloud around the credit industry because they people know that people are lazy they know yeah and they don't want to learn it so now let me give you a microwave solution because that's what everybody's looking for i'm gonna give you a microwave solution to fix your problem so how do you pitch your clients when you're telling them the time frame as far as like you cannot promise nobody nothing so you just like, i I'm can give it. you results but it may take time Mm. You have to learn what to do. 100%. Anybody that's promising you any results in a, in, a, in a specific time frame, it is illegal. There's a law called CROA, Credit Repair Organization Act. You cannot make any promises. Mm. This is the problem, right? So a lot of people don't even know that late payments don't exist and late payments are illegal. I'm sorry, what do you mean by that, though? Late payments don't exist. Okay, take your phone out. Okay, done. All right, let's go back to 15 U.S.C. 1681. Okay, hold on one sec. One more time. 15 U.S.C. 1681. 1681. 1601. Gotcha. No, 1681. Oh, 1681. Gotcha. 1681A. Remember you were there earlier? Yeah. At the exclusions? Yes, I'm here now. All right. So go to the exclusion sections, right? And okay. tell me what it says. Exclusions. Let's see. That's Cornell University. Mm -hmm. Boom. Except as provided. 1681A, definitions, rules, and construct. Section A, okay. You see it? Okay, uh, it starts with what? The, um, 16, uh, exclusions, number two. Scroll down. Remember where you were getting the definitions from? Yeah. It's right there. Right now it's loading very slow right now. But I feel like you have it off the top of your head. I do. I, I, All right, hit me. But I want people to know that, you know, it's there. Oh, no, I, no. I'm, I'm definitely going to pull this up, and right. I will show it. Honestly. So it says, except as provided in paragraph three, okay. the term consumer report does not include. Now, when it comes to the word consumer report, what someone needs to do is to go to the word consumer report and see the definition. Okay. In the definition of what your consumer report is, FICO is not in there. FICO is an industry standards bank used. FICO isn't law, right? Hmm. Okay. So now FICO uses information from your consumer report to give a FICO score or a risk score using their proprietary technology, the algorithm that spits it out. Okay. Right? So now that we know that FICO is not in the definition of your consumer report, that means the factors of FICO are not factors of your consumer report. Mm. So factors of FICO, uh, payment history, utilization, age of credit, new credit, and mixture of credit, those five factors have nothing to do with your consumer report. They are independent. Why is this not taught? It, the law is there, bro. The system makes more money from bad credit than anything else. Come on, we're going to do the math in a minute. Okay. So now, when we go down to, to, to A1, it's going to say um, reports, information, reports containing information solely as to transactions. Yeah. Transactions. What is your payment history? Isn't that your transactional history? Yeah. Or experiences. Your experience is the usage of a line of credit that you're using. So if it's a $10,000 line of credit, and if you're using $5,000, that's considered utilization, but that's also the experience of the consumer mm -hmm. and that line of credit. Gotcha. So now, if your transactions, which is your payment history, 
and your experiences, which are your utilization, which makes up the two biggest factors of the FICO algorithm, the payment history, which is 35%, and the utilization, which is 30%. Together, they're 65%. And it simply breaks down to 35% being 192.5 points and then um, 30% being 165 points because, remember, the credit score ranges from 300 to 850. Correct. That gives you, what, 550 points. Yeah. So, so 35% of 550 is equal to 192.5. And then 30%, right, is... Um, 30% of 550, that gives you 165 points. Together, that's 357.5 points. Those two categories alone. But the law just told you that a transactions or an experience is not included in the consumer report. Where does the late payment and the utilization come from? That's how I cracked the code, and that's how I built it 800 three times. Hit a button, please, sir. How? What? Oh, that's a, that's a button. It is a button. Yeah. 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 You, want, you want to try it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. no um, oh, gosh, credit, man. There's so many misconceptions around credit. Um, it's intentional. I believe it is intentional. So you think it's essentially designed to be mm -hmm. confusing or to make so you my, not want to research it? My question, before. my question for you is, why do you think so like we have an econ class in high school, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you think we don't have a credit class to set up our youth for success in the future? Because I mean, more than just understanding how government works and how money and the government works, I think the biggest thing is to like learn credit. Money? What money? There is no money here. 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. Mm. Federal Reserve note. That's what's written on there. It's legal tender. It's not money. Money is coin of silver and coin of gold. That's real money. Mm. That's God's money. <laughs> you know what's really crazy? No, no. It's very rare that he's speechless. And he was just like, what do I, what I do, do, with that? What do, I do with that? He always has something to say. And when you say that to people, what does that mean, by the way? You what? took it off the gold standard. What does that mean? So Just before, yeah. um, we could use, there were certificates before. So you could redeem the gold corresponding to the certificate. Okay. Right? But you can't print gold. You can't print silver. Yeah. So in order for the Federal Reserve to fully gain control over the money, quote-unquote, it had to be removed. You didn't know that it was illegal for, for citizens to own gold? I'm sorry, it was illegal? Illegal. When? You want to pull it up for me? I'll pull it up. It was illegal to own uh, gold? Uh, I'm, I'm hey, he's like, quiet. look it up. <laughs> it was illegal to have gold. What was the thinking behind that, though? It was right after the Federal Reserve. Oh, gosh. Put it in, when was it illegal for Americans to own gold? Oh, no, I and, found it. It popped up. They were listening to us. <laughs> what did they say? Hold up. That's crazy. Well, it's like... Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yes, in this country from 1933 to 1974, it was illegal for U.S. citizens to own gold in the Why? form of gold bullion without a special license. On January 1st, 1975, these restrictions were lifted and gold can now be freely held in the United States without any licensing or restrictions of any kind. What was the thinking? The, the Federal Reserve Bank needed unlimited capabilities to print. You cannot print gold. Okay. So what the, what, they, what, they, what, what, the Google, what the Google said, the Google, it said, um, the stated reason for the order was that hard times had caused hoarding of gold, stalling economic growth and worsening the depression as the United sense, States as you're saying it. was then using the gold standard for its currency. That is the worst reason. I, that, that's, why, that's why I said, this is what the Google is saying. Yeah, no. I, don't, I don't know if for How this to be sense? true. I'm just, I didn't know it was illegal to own gold in those times. That's a long time. To, that's what, 40 years. For 40 years, for 40 some odd years, you couldn't own but gold. 1975 was just yeah. a couple of years ago. We got people that still lived in that era when gold was illegal. Easy. 
This is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Guys, credit goes deep. America is backed by full faith and credit of the United States people. It is in the motto. That's why they're always throwing, sign up for this credit card at you. No matter where you go, you want to sign up for this credit card? Sign up for Money this credit card. Money is only created through debt. If no one borrows, no new money is created. I need you to tell people, how do they find you, man? Because I am so <laughs> mind blown right now. Um, I don't even know what to ask anymore. I'm just like, <laughs> really? <laughs> it's crazy. It's Cons like, it sounds, it sounds, it almost sounds like the, the pharmaceutical market. You know what I mean? Oh, like there's no, there's started. no money in curing. You know what don't I mean? Me there's, started. there's no money in you get, getting, get, you get money in treating. You yeah, don't get money in curing. That's what I'm saying. There's yeah. no money in curing. You know what I mean? So the same thing for credit. There's no money in fixing people's credits or getting them out of debt. There's no money in that for the United States. There's like a, y'all see, y'all see what I'm saying? So I see why people are negative. Dude, all right. <laughs> I see, I see it now. That makes so sense. So when I had bad credit, okay. when I had bad credit, my first car was a used 2007 Nissan Altima. Okay. Right? I couldn't even get it. I had to get a cosigner, right? Didn't even know what the word cosigner meant. Then... When I did get a cosigner, shout out to my boy Kevin, right? And I got this used, used Nissan Altima 2007 with 75,000 miles on it. I was paying 18.9% interest rate. If you have good credit, you're paying between 2 to 5%. Jeez. That's not a lot. Bad credit, you're paying double digits. Yeah. You are paying 15, 25, 35%. And they know you're going to default on it anyway. And they know that an insurance policy was taken out on the finance charge, 15 USC 1605. There's an insurance built into the finance charge. So if the obligor defaults, the lender gets compensated. So they get full payment already when you default. They got a check. So it's a win-win situation for them. They're winning four to five times, bro. Because now they got the insurance money. Now they're going to put it as a charge-off. Now there's going to be late payment fees. Now they're going to sell it to a collections. Come on. This is upsetting. I mean, no, I appreciate the education, but it actually... It's, it's really upsetting because um, I know a lot of people that feel defeated and they're in that position. There is they just hope. don't have the knowledge. There is hope. Seek and ye shall find. Mm. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be open. People are not asking the right questions. Go read a book. 100%. How do I change my bad credit situation? Put it inside of Google. It's going to bring you something. Start there. But if people are unwilling to change the way they think, they will forever be poor because poverty is a mindset. Mm -hmm. Hit a button. That's a button. Mm. So I have three more questions I'm going to ask you. <laughs> are you ready for your question, sir? Or do you want me to ask the first I, I think I asked my question. I think I, 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 you know. No, when we wrap up, we always ask one question yeah, for you. Yeah, go, you go ahead. All right, cool. You go, and then I'll go. All right, so personal question for you. Mm -hmm. Next five years, what do you hope to accomplish? Um, next five years, uh, I will be the owner of about 100 companies. Mm, I like that. A CEO, you know, Grant Cordon is a big, is a big role model of mine, Robert Kiyosaki. Hey. And um, true financial freedom lies in rule number one of rich dad poor dad the rich don't work for money they have money work for them mm -hmm. that is a button sir that was a <laughs> definitely a button i'm getting a lot of money <laughs> you, do. you might break the record today <laughs> that's awesome i like that um that's probably my favorite book right now um actually all time rich dad poor dad and think and grow rich that one i listened to on audio mm -hmm. um 
I'm very much an audio person, like reading it, which I know the cheat code is doing both. Mm -hmm. But audio, for some reason, I'm very much an auditory learner. Because you can multitask when doing it. Exactly. When you're reading, you have to dedicate the time. And I just want to hide something from a person. You put put it in a book. book. Mm, I just say at the same time. I don't get to hit your own button. That's terrible. You got a button too. (laughs) No, man. That was for him. You said at the same time. I don't know. You ready for your question? Go ahead and ask your other one. Yeah, I know you said three. Go ahead and questions. go to your two, and then I'm going to do my one, and then you do your last one, and then close out. All right. Quick tip that you can give to someone right now to fix their situation as far as credit. Go to my YouTube channel. Mm. Every, my free content is better than a lot of people's paid content. For only $47, the book on my website is $197. On my website, I mean, right now you can get it for $47. All they got to do is text the word FICO, right? F-I-C-O. It's not even complicated. Yeah. Four letters. F-I-C-O. Text FICO to 917-993-5238. Done. Get the ebook. You can start there. I put the whole journey. I even got pictures in there when I was deployed. My 140 books. All the receipts are there. Yeah. Everything is there. I'm not capping or making anything up. I am very Googleable. Y'all need to download this ASAP. The quickness. Are you ready for yours? Yeah. Before I ask my last one? No, I got it. So okay. uh, you mentioned you were, in Ku- you were in Kuwait. And at what time in your deployment did you did the button click? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and also, sure there's, it's, two, it's, that one? it's two questions. What did you want to do prior, get, you know, getting into the to, to military? And what in the... the where in the... Uh, that's three the, questions. That's, that's three. But, okay. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I'm going with it. We're putting it all in there. You know, <laughs> when did it click for all you? All right. So let's take the first one, right? Okay. We're going to do them reversely because I can... Answering them reverse makes more sense. All right. So I was a part of the 40-40-40 club, right? 40 hours a week, 40 years, the whole pension, get in the house, white picket fence, three and a half kids, the whole work, yeah. right? I was, I was with it. And then um, I applied for a city job with the Environmental Environmental Protection Department. EPA. Yeah. And and when I was a few days, like a week from starting, I got told the position wasn't available anymore. And on my previous job, um, I was training my replacement. So uh, my two weeks notice was already in everything oh, was there, right? Oh, okay. So I got let go. First, to, uh, first punch in the stomach by God. Didn't recognize it though. And what age was this um, at the time? This was 2019. Okay. Right? And, 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 all right, let me go get a job. So I started Ubering and stuff like that. I got back on military orders and then... After that, now, um, I deployed. Now, when I deployed, and when I deployed, I had a book on me every single day. You would never find me without a book. Yeah. I was that dedicated. And you know what some of my sergeants, the, the sergeant above me was saying? I, I can't read. That, um, why am I always reading? Is this military related? Dude, you know what I told him? I said, listen. Put me back on the plane, send me back home. Because if you think I'm putting down this motherfucking book, y'all got a rude awakening. And this is how I said it. I didn't care. Yeah. Demote me. I didn't care. I was so committed to my success. What Not even God himself could take me off the path. Like that. I was so committed. I don't care what happens. Send me home. Take me off the deployment. Every I had a book everywhere right and it's crazy because now i'm rich and she's broke mm. and i'm just saying i'm just saying I like that, that it, it, instead of shutting people down maybe you should have came and found out what i was doing and learn some shit because then you working for fifty thousand dollars a year now dude i can make that on a weekend right 
And this isn't me showing off. This is not what I'm doing. I am saying, ladies and gentlemen, when I changed the way I thought about things, when I changed my mind, when I changed me, when I reconstructed my brain, I saw that $50,000 a year was not enough. And that you can make that in a day. So what people go to make in one year, I can now, I have the skills to make that in one day. Jeez. And I have done it. Hit a button. Hit a button. That is incredible. So now I lied. So I education to... isn't a scam. Okay. School is a scam and the type of education. I would set up 100%. So I lied. I said I had one more question. Now I have two. <laughs> All right. Let's okay. get it. So. I asked this question on every episode so far on this podcast. But wait, wait, we didn't finish his yet. We still okay. got some left. W what was the second one? Um, when did it click? It clicked when I, when, when, when I got fired, right? And I got fired in the sense of I got called into the office by a first sergeant, right? And first sergeant said, hey, we're going to have to cut your orders in, in September, um, for the new fiscal year, which is October 1st, for those of you that are familiar with the military, the new fiscal year starts October 1st. September um, is the last orders you're going to be on because we overspend, the government overspent on the COVID budget, right? Gotcha. But then, lo and behold, 30 days later, $3 billion went to Ukraine. Ask me how I felt about oh, that. Gosh. I got nothing against nobody from Ukraine, but you just fired me and sent a whole 3.7 billion to Ukraine. Wow. Get out of here, bro. Oh, so that's when it clicked. You want to yeah. know when it clicked? That's when it clicked that no one is coming to save you. And if you are not your greatest investment, keep waiting for somebody to come and save you. Mm, hit him. So I hope that answers your question. You officially broke the record. I am not <laughs> sure, but I am... Actually, 100% sure. We're going to put a record. counter. Yeah, we're going to do it. I think we're on 15 <laughs> right now. We're on 15. And the last question you had was, or did um, you get to asking it? No, that was it. That, that was, was it? That was All it. right, yeah. bet. All right, so I'm going to ask this question that we ask on every episode. What do you think matters more and rank them in order? Skill set, work ethic, network. <laughs> That's a difficult one. Yeah, I know. Every, every, same reaction, every same single person. Yeah, like, skill set. Uh, all important, but. Skill set. Okay. What was the other one? Uh, skill set, network, work ethic. Okay. So developing a skill and the degree of how that skill is going to be mastered will be based on your work ethic. Agreed. Right? Mm -hmm. Because the more you put into something, the more you're going to get out. Garbage in, garbage out. Awesome stuff in, awesome stuff out. Right. So in order for us to change the output of anything, we must change the input. So if you input mastery, yeah. the output is mastery. Agreed. Right. So that's where the work ethic comes in. And then the network now gives you the ability to become extremely rich by leveraging that skill set that you have mastered yeah. to serve so many people. Mm. But you still have to rank it, though. You still have to rank it. I would, I because would, I would, obviously I would, all intertwine, but I would put skill set first mm, because you need to right. gain the like skill, that. yeah, gain the skill, and then the other one was the work ethic because you need to become a master of that skill, mm. and then now, once you have mastered that skill, the next step now is the network for you to go and spread your gift to Hit everyone, a button, please, sir. Uh, He's officially got the record. That's good. Record holder. That was deep. That was good. That was good, that was right? Good. Yeah, that might be the best answer you've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. All right. So the last question I have for you, um, talking to our audience, I mm -hmm. want you to talk to this one person right now that's just listening and feels defeated as far as um, the situation that they're in as far as credit, right? They might feel defeated like, I can't fix this. I can't get past it. What message do you want to give to that one person watching right now? All right. Um... I recognize that I needed to know my worth and you need to recognize your worth. I was spending 40 hours a week building somebody else's dream and I spent no time building my own. So my question to you is, are you building your own dream, right? If your dream is to work for someone and be the best at what you do, then I congratulate you a million percent, as long as that is contributing to your dream. And 
It's not how you fall, it's how you get up. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Don't stay down there. Just get up. You know, get up, just one foot in front of the other, keep it moving. The next thing is, I know something about you that you don't know about yourself. You have greatness in you, and you are your greatest investment. The greatest investment you will ever make is an investment in yourself. Mm. So keep believing in you, even when all the naysayers don't. Don't expect people to hear the beat of your drum. It is your drum. Don't expect people to see your vision. It was given to you. And if you want to kill a big dream, you introduce it to a small mind. Mm. Be mindful of your circle. Audit your circle. Shout out to my guy, Haitian CEO. You get a studio applause for that one. <laughs> yeah. You do. You don't even get a button. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That, that was, was good. Great. All right. Cool. And, and it, any back. better than that. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Flipping Tables podcast. Oh, I forgot oh, to well, tell come them. Back, come back, come back, come back. Switch, 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 switch. I totally forgot. Oh. I totally forgot. See, we we caught up. I, you asked, I was in it. No, you, I, you asked it, but, I, but we got, yeah, no, no. I got didn't. selfish. You weren't selfish. You did ask it. I never answered because we went down a different rabbit hole. Agreed. So <laughs> agreed, you can agreed, find agreed. me on all social medias, Doreen DeLevante, D-A-R-A-I-N-E, D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, especially my YouTube, guys. You're going to spend... Hours, hours, probably weeks <laughs> consuming information. But I promise you, the person going into my YouTube will not be the same person coming out. Mm. That is a fact. I think the only thing left is we got to get him on Pinterest now. Yeah. I do have a you Pinterest. Do you have a Pinterest? Yeah. <laughs> I am on Pinterest. Thank you for reminding me. I am on Pinterest. <laughs> I, love I am on Twitch too. <laughs> oh man, he's, yeah. he's everywhere. Uh, yeah. All That's the links are obviously going to be right in front of you right now. But <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, awesome episode. If he, if obviously he's giving you value, just um, comment your thoughts on it and we'll definitely respond. And if there's a part two, drop it in the chat. When there's a part two, we'll no, definitely no. jump it up. They have to want a part two. Oh, y'all want a part two. I'm, I'm speaking for y'all. Y'all going to want a part two. <laughs> yes. Part two. Coming soon. This has been the Flipping Tables podcast. Let's see how many people are tuning in. Honestly. Yeah. I'm here. Uh, let's I'm see good. them coming. I'm good. In let's the comments. see them coming. I know you guys are going to respond, but I want you to double the amount that I was, I was anticipating maybe 100 in a week. I want 300 in a week. We're going to get those comments in. Why not 300,000? Why not that? You know what? 600,000 it is. Yeah. We're doing that. Yeah. It's been flipping tables. <laughs> <laughs>